Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to do a Bible study for targeted individuals and victims of gang stalking. Uh, my name is Seth, and I've been a TI for about a decade, uh, or at least consciously, anyway. Um, so let's bow our heads, and we'll just get right into it, okay? Um, Father God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, we just, I thank you for the ability just to even reach people. Um, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth, for your salvation. And we just pray a hedge of protection over all the targeted individuals, supernatural grace and a leading to your cross, to the truth, as only you could do. Um, may this video get to those who need it and open the ears, hearts, and minds of those anyone else it, cross, it comes across. Um, I just pray this liberates, it frees the captives, um, undoes the bound, mends the brokenhearted, eyesight to the blind. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Yahushua's name, I pray. Amen. Okay, guys. So in this video, we're going to look at Proverbs 4, verses 14 through 19. And this is a really beautiful scripture. It'll be on your screen. And if uh, this gives us astounding insight into the enemy, uh, which is really the serpent, and this even, and even the cross references that are provided, which we're going to cover, um, even gets into this. So we're going to have astounding things being unveiled here. But Proverbs four fourteen through nineteen is a truly beautiful scripture overall, and. It gives us deep, deep insight into the gang stalking campaign. And power is knowledge. The Bible says my people perish from lack, lack of knowledge. And if you're a victim of gang stalking, you know, one of the hardest things is figuring it out, you know. Um, that's one of the hardest things. That's what we have to do. But luckily, um, God has given us a very precious gift for those who can find it. And that is the scriptures. That is our Bibles. Because the truth is in our Bibles. Okay. I know people might think I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But t there are so many TIs. It's just increasing. And a lot of the TIs um, haven't come to the truth. So I'm just going to give uh, the rundown. Which I do say a lot on this channel. But it has to be said. It can't be preached enough. The reason why many people are targeted. Or because... Um, Satan, who is, your gang stalking is orchestrated from the second heaven, generally speaking. That's the top of the pyramid and know who we are before we're even born. Um, and if you're a victim of gang stalking, this should make sense. It, it makes sense the supernatural witchcraft coming against you. You might even experience your own exist, your own existence persecuting you. It's just supernatural and it's coming from another dimension that's higher than us. Okay. So there's, we are in the first heaven, so to speak. Satan, where our gang stalking comes from, is in the second heaven. But Yah, the Almighty God, is in the third heaven. And He is sovereign over all. Now, the reason why many people are being gang stalked is because they belong to Jesus and they really haven't found Him yet. Satan, through his all-seeing eye and ability in the second heaven rule, um, is pretty much hitting below the belt. In the kingdom of God. And it's going after the poor of God's people. That That's not an insult. It just means people who haven't matured. Or figured out who they are yet. In Christ. Because Christ is the truth. And this makes sense. When you go into targeted individual community. It's a lot, a lot of the TIs are in the world. And struggling. Like I don't want to hear about Jesus. Just don't talk to me about this religious stuff. They don't realize it's the truth. It's not religion. It's a relationship. It's a spiritual truth. Because we are all sinners in need of a savior from the sin of, sin of Adam and Eve. And the blood of Jesus washes us clean and has defeated our gang stalkers at the cross. And judgment will come. And we have an everlasting kingdom uh, to look forward to. Those, these are the promises of God. That's why um, we are to be like a rock that cannot be moved. Okay? When we stand in the truth. So that's the general gist of what's going on in the TI community. Uh, that is the truth they really don't want you to know. So, 
Let's take a look at Proverbs 4:14 4, to 19. This is an awesome scripture, and we're going to talk about um, all the depths this gets into. So let's just read it plainly. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path to the just is as the shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Hallelujah. Amen. This is such a beautiful scripture. So let's break it down and talk about what it's really covering here, especially through the lens of a T.I. So verse 14, let's revisit this. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Okay. I've covered this in um, previous vi videos. Very recently previous videos. They will be in the description box below. Uh, one of the main principles and ideas behind the gang stalking campaign. They want to know whose side you are on spiritually. Okay. The presence of God or the presence of spiritual truth really creates a plumb line. Um, it makes the good people better and the bad people worse. And that's kind of what gang stalking uh, does. It creates that plumb line. So a staple for TIs is Proverbs 1. And Proverbs 1 tells us, basically, don't consent with them. How, how, many, how many of you TIs out there have come across, you know, they're trying to make you bow down to Satan or they're, they're trying to get you to join them. They want to see what side, what, what you're going to go with, Okay. So this is pretty much covering this spiritual principle in ga in the gang stalking community, and again, see the description box below. I've done things on this. Um, so let's move on to verse fifteen. Okay, avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Hallelujah. Okay, do not join them, do not turn to evil. This is a spiritual matter. It's not okay. Now here is the secret. Many TIs don't under, uh, realize why our gang stalkers laugh at us so much, why they seem so narcissistic and their consciences are like seared like a hot iron, like a reprobate mind. There's no empathy, no compassion. And when they commit trauma on you, the more you suffer, literally the happier they are. And this is because they are not exactly human like we are. Generally speaking, they have made a deal with the devil. They have either converted to being a serpent, uh, cloaked in uh, the image of human, st stuff like that. It's very demonic, okay? And um, where Proverbs 4 verse 16 tells us, it tells us one of their secrets they don't want you to know. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. So literally, your main gang stalkers, okay, not the ones who human traffic you and the perps who are just used and giving gift cards. We're talking about the head honchos here, your CIA, FBI agents, you know. Um, horrible things happen to them unless they cause others to fall, unless they cause trauma, stress, and anxiety. That's why um, the gang stalking campaign is so continuous and it's like, a vampiric type of system. Okay, see the description box below um, for other resources. Uh, I did cover these topics. Um, it's literally a van. They suck you dry because they just feed off the stress, feed off the trauma, feed off the anxiety. Right? They don't just take you out. They just make you suffer as long as you possibly can and just siphon off that pain because they literally get the light from it. Okay, and we see that in Jeremiah eleven fifteen. That's a, that's a cross reference. Okay, Jeremiah eleven fifteen talks about this, um, and the holy flesh is, is passed from you. When you do evil, then you rejoice. Now, I'm not. This, I've seen this with my own eyes. Okay, I've seen this with my own eyes, literally, um, especially with these government head honcho the. These princes of Egypt, so to speak, um, 
uh, we read about them in the book of Micah. The entire book of Micah covers who these people are. Um, they're the untouchable CIA agents. They have tenure. They can't get fired. And they're totally demonic. And they just suck the life out of innocent people uh, who belong to God's kingdom and, uh, and who don't know what's going on. You see? And I've seen this with my own eyes. I've seen them smile when when their witchcraft causes me stress, pain, or anxiety. I literally seen the delight in their countenance, the delight in their face for that moment. So I know this stuff is absolutely true. All right? It's horrible to think about, but it's very true. So yes, for they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. I mean, nothing can be farthest from the truth. That is why it's like a vampiric type of system. That is why there's no empathy, no compassion. And they just they just love when you're suffering. They love it. Okay? So let's move on to verse 17. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So bread in the Bible, they make a covenant with wickedness. Okay? They made a pact with the devil. And they drink the wine of violence. This stuff is pretty much self-explanatory. This is all the deep satanic ritual stuff. Child human sacrifice. All this demonic stuff. Okay. Um, idolatry. Uh, worship of Baal. All that kind of stuff. Okay. That's what we're talking about here. Excuse me. Uh, verse 18. Now here is the good news. <laughs> Verse 18, but the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day. This is such a beautiful scripture, and we're going to talk about what it means. Psalm 90 verse 8 tells us, You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your countenance. Now what does that mean, guys? When you start doing what the Bible tells you to do, you will see your life supernaturally change. Okay, and one of the many things, and, and that is the goal if you're a TI. But one of those things you will see when you do the commandments of Yah, um, you will literally have a glowing countenance. Your face will glow. Um, and, and if you notice, and it goes in the opposite spectrum too, if you notice your gang stalkers might have a dark countenance. Uh, they've done sins that lead to death, uh, sacrificed children, um, sacrifice to idols. Um, you, they literally just have a dark, disgusting countenance about them that you could see with your spiritual eyes. And this is what Psalm uh, 90 verse 8 is talking about. It goes both ways. For those who do Yah's commandments, who do God's commandments, light emits from them. And those who go in the way of wickedness, they spiritually look dark and they look disgusting. So in Proverbs 4.18, this really gets into prophecy here. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day because everything is a shadow of something greater. There is nothing new under the sun. That which was is that which shall be, as Ecclesiastes says. And the light of our countenance that shines as we do the commandments of God is really a foreshadow of one of God's promises to us. We get our glorified light bodies upon our redemption and the wicked get clothed with death. Okay, and that's what Proverbs 18 and 19 are talking about. Verse 19 continues with, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Because they don't know God's judgment. They reject the word of God. They don't know the word of God. They don't know the truth. And they don't realize that God is going to reveal himself. The Son of Man is going to come in, his, come in the clouds. He's going to cre decree an eternal decree. And the righteous will be glorified in light bodies. It will be a paradigm shift. And the wicked will be clothed in darkness, in death, in accordance to, our, in accordance to their own sins. Even so much, in the, as the book of Isaiah says, uh, worms will even cover them or live inside of them. They will literally look like a corpse. This is all over the scriptures. It's a hidden doctrine. So the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know, at, they know not at what they stumble because this hasn't come yet. Okay? This great judgment hasn't come yet. So this is one of the promises we hold on to um, 
as we walk in Jesus, as we carry our cross, deny this world, focus on what's above, and we store up our treasures in heaven and abandon the ways of this world. And if you're getting stalked, if you're getting stalked, uh, they pretty much do that. The work is pretty much cut out for us because they take life away. And we're supposed to forsake this life. We're not supposed to hang on to the material possessions that they steal and break from us. Forget it all, man. Uh, learn the truth. Learn God's promises. This life is but a vapor. This life is but a test. We're supposed to give this life as a living sacrifice to eternal rewards and an everlasting kingdom that is so worth, it is so worth these trial and tribulations that we go through on this earth. And those rewards last forever. This life is but a vapor. And it's nothing but dust and moth and death in this life. Okay? And this life is their last stop. Okay, the wicked, this is their last last stop. It's a good deal, guys. It's a good deal if you can conceive of it. So, I just wanted to share this, guys. This is a, just a quick little Bible study. Really beautiful verse in Proverbs 4, 14 through 19. Okay, y'all bless you. I pray you are all doing well. I pray a hedge of protection over you. Um, the Lord keep you. The Lord bless you. Lift up his countenance upon you. Uh, Yahushua, be gracious to you. Make his light shine upon you and keep you and give you peace. In Yahushua's name I pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Yah bless you. Again, see the description box below. Um, there's more stuff getting um, into the depths of the topics we've covered in this video. Yah bless you. Thank you. Have a good night. The second epistle of Peter, chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.